Hey everybody, it's Jiggly Jacob. I'm here on the Straw Hat No playing this game called MDK as our main character poses seductively for us. Here with Thornbrain and High Wang. Hello. Hello. And today we're gonna be playing uh, MDK. It's a uh, it's an action platformer, third person shooter. Uh, it's a game I played a lot when I was a kid, and I hope you guys enjoy it. It's kind of a cult classic where like it's one of those games like there's a dedicated fan base of like nine people that really like it. So I hope I can open you guys' eyes to it too. I've seen a lot of these things back when I was a dinosaur, and video games are new and fresh, and I keep hearing about this, but I've never actually played... Ooh. Every level starts off with you skydiving from space onto a giant tank. Huh. Like you do. The basic plot of the game, since it's not really explained very well, you play as a... actually a janitor. Your name is Kurt Hectic, and it <laughs> turns out, oh shit, there's aliens afoot. Um, the, these aliens came on gigantic tanks called Minecrawlers. And, um, real quick, once you're at the first level, turn around. What the hell? That is just, I guess it's just called an I Feel Top. It tries to run away from you, but if you eat it, then you get a 150 health. So, before we started recording, you mentioned Earthworm Gym developers. Yeah, I'm seeing it. Shiny Entertainment made this game. Published by Pi. Now, now they just make Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles toys. Oh. And here we have the world's smallest nuclear explosion. That sounds pretty badass, but all it does, all it really is, is a key. You throw it at a door with a radiation logo on it, and it opens. And you check to make sure the camera's still running. <laughs> then, you, then you check yourself because you just lost kids. <laughs> So, one of the main mechanics of this game is actually sniping. You can zoom in to <laughs> snipe, and you can actually get headshots. <laughs> this is basically a training room. This is their way of a tutorial without just completely showing it it's a tutorial. I don't know what the canonical purpose of these guys are, just sitting here with targets over their heads, other than to be a tutorial, but it's funny. So, what happens if you shoot the bullseye and not them? Um, it still gets the headshot. I just like to get him right in the head. Okay. Oh. Look, they're shaking their asses at me. Uh, I think we should shoot that bomb and take care of him. Alright, now... First instance of items. Hand grenades. I always, as a kid, I always thought these looked like mouths. Looks like an egg. <laughs> and another main mechanic is the, um, the parachute that you have. You can deploy it at any time. You have infinite number of them, and they look, and they defy the laws of physics, because it's just, uh, like, five ribbons. So basically what you're saying is that this is a direct inspiration of Just Cause 2. <laughs> yeah, you get, oh, I never really made that connection myself. <laughs> Alright, so that was an enemy spawner. Every time you would have killed these guys, another one would have just came in their spot. You gotta sh headshot all these guys to get them to get out of the fucking way of the platform. Okay, clearly these guys are your friends. They're saying hi to you. And this is how you respond. <laughs> you know how in Bomberman you're, you always accuse him of killing people who just seem to be having a good time? <laughs> well, he's not having a good time. That's kind of the case in this game. We're the janitor. <laughs> yeah. From what I hear, people love that job. The, you know, um, you learned this mostly in the second game, but you play, you're playing as an apathetic motherfucker right now because <laughs> you learn in the second game that he just does not want to do this right now. He doesn't want to be a hero, he just wants to keep being a janitor. Here we have a Bones Airstrike. It's a uh, sniper weapon. I'm going to show you what that does a little bit later. Is there a purpose to the camera moving off to the side every time you turn? Um, I think that's just the way the game is made, because it actually... I'm actually gonna put it on screen right now, um, the way I have my controls set up. It takes a lot to make these make this game kind of run in a more modern way, because, like, the way the controls are set up are so dated, and it actually takes a lot of finagling to get it to a way that's, like, WASD, use the mouse-to-aim kind of stuff. So, it's probably just not used to that kind of thing. Was this game a console game originally, or was it PC2? Because I do remember 
This was back in what, early 2000s? Back when uh, both PC gaming and controller gaming with analog sticks weren't uniform. So nobody knew what the fuck to do with controls, and I could see why that would cause uh, controller issues. This game came out in uh, 1997. I'm actually playing the PC version. There's also a version that was released on the PlayStation that, um, it has a few additions and a few, um, few things that are taken out. Um, any significant things that, uh, big significant differences between the two I'll be pointing out when I reach them. But this game actually was released in uh, 1997 on PC. Wow. And yeah, yeah. That, that pretty much explains why the controls are so iffy, because this was back before controls were uniform. So, um, an item that I used a moment ago... Well, fuck you. Um, <laughs> an item that I used a moment ago was a dummy decoy. These aliens are really stupid, so a crude drawing uh, on a balloon can trick them pretty easily. Once you throw a dummy decoy, pretty much every enemy is gonna be shooting that instead of you. Oh, I'm coming at you! <laughs> Some kamikaze motherfuckers just come out holding nukes. And if they run into you, they explode and do, like, 20 damage. I thought they were running at you with drumsticks. I'm, I'm hearing screams of another kamikaze guy. I don't know where he is. He's hiding behind the corner. He doesn't... There he there is! He is. <laughs> I like to imagine that they're not kamikaze guys. They're just on fire and you're killing them. Putting them out of their misery. Oh my god, I'm on fire! Please help me! No, 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 no. Will you take this loaf of bread, please? <laughs> Coming straight to you from the deli! <laughs> Fresh from the ovens! These aliens are actually just trying to give us fucking delicious meats. What did we fall into? Because I'm not going to lie, that looked kind of strange. That's uh, a hole. Well, yeah, but... <laughs> <laughs> and this looks like a subway system. Oh, okay. Fuck you. <laughs> nice. A little too close to that guy. So throughout the games, you're... You, um, this item is a lot more uh, common than I thought it was. The super chain gun. They, um, that's the item in the bottom left there. It has limited ammo, and there's not... And it runs out really quickly, but when you have it, you can pretty much decimate anything in your path. So it's basically like the heavy machine gun from the Metal Slugs. A little bit. Except you don't have a cool announcer telling you, Super Chain Gun! Well, you got the text up there, so... There's a Batman. The Dark Alien. Of course. <laughs> What's He's pretty night? much just an... He's pretty much just an alert droid. If he, um, if you get in the line of its sight, you can, uh, pretty much all the enemies around you get located, um, or get notified of your presence. You can actually destroy it, and uh, it actually makes some fights a lot easier. Do we have candy? They heal one health each. Uh, are they nuclear? Um, the um, the logo on them is actually just like a strong arm, like a flexing oh. muscle guy. That was a hazmat sign. <laughs> Nuclear candy. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, this tank will shoot out enemies, but enough grenades will take it out with no problem. Now, you mentioned this to me earlier, and we were seeing it right now. The game actually changes aspect ratio as you play it. Yeah, a little bit. Like, right now you see that it currently has letterboxes, kinda, mm -hmm. but, um, when you uh, enter sniper mode, those letterboxes go away. And it, it is kinda, it's it's a bit of a nitpick because I honestly just noticed it recently, but it, it once you notice it, it does get kind of annoying. And isn't that one of the reasons it's kind of difficult to play this on a modern PC? Uh, a little bit. Oh, for a split second we saw, um, Kane's face? Cartel? Kurt. Kurt, yeah. Every once in a while an anim idle animation happens where he yeah, just turns around. So now we hijack a plane and drop nukes on everything. Jesus. Yeah, these screams are pretty tough. Destroy the building! <laughs> <laughs> Destroy the spawner! This part is completely optional, but it makes things a lot easier for you to actually go through it. Yeah, it's a lot easier when there aren't any enemies. <laughs> it's got a set path, though, so there are certain places that it just doesn't go over. So it leaves you with something to do once you get back on your feet. So, I'm noticing you're flashing as you get shot. Does this damage you as you do this, or...? 
Um, you're actually getting, yeah, you're just getting shot by enemies down below. Sadly, there isn't much of a way to dodge it, but they don't do that much damage, so it's, unless you just don't attack them at all or go in with really low health, it really won't make that much of a difference. So what you're saying is, if I'm really bad at this video game, which I am inclined to be, I could die forever in this auto-scroller. Um, I'm gonna point, I'm gonna point something out about that, actually. Um, I, I, I find this game pretty easy, maybe because I've been playing it for like 15 years, but I think it's pretty easy. But one thing that makes it really hard sometimes is that there are absolutely no mid-level checkpoints. If you die, you go all the way to the beginning of the level again. Oh, fuck mm. that. Wow. Yeah, these levels are long too, like, each each level is usually about 20 minutes. That's probably stymied by the difficulty, but I'd, I'm I'm the kind of person that would play this game at, like, max difficulty and then scream at it. I think the only difference between the difficulties is that, um, the enemies have more health. Ah, uh, yuck. And I think they do more damage too. I th I'm playing this on normal right now, there's just mm. standard easy, normal, hard. I will say this game does have a sort of Serious Sam vibe to it, where there's no must, no fuss, you're just a dude, go to the alien planet, kill a bunch of dudes, act like a bunch of jokers, have fun. Now we're going to show off the Bones airstrike. This is our friend Max. Or at least, I think in this game he's called Bones, but he was later renamed to Max. He lets down an airstrike, and I've learned, don't use the airstrike on moving targets, because that missed completely. <laughs> Bones Airstrike is a pretty rare item. I think there's like only six or so in the whole game, and only one in this level. Aren't you glad we used it now? <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I honestly, I can think of a few better places to use it, so I'm really disappointed in myself, if I'm honest. Luckily, there are just apples lying around everywhere. It's fine. It still looked cool. It did. Max is a pretty boss guy. He's the boss. <laughs> the final boss, spoilers. Not really. I right, just blow up this airplane and that blows up that building so you can get access to it. Visually, this game does kind of remind me of Fury 3, which I used to play way back when I was little. I'm not familiar with that one. I haven't heard of that game. It's It doesn't play anything like this. You're in a ship, you fly around shooting other alien ships. But that's kind of a similar... I want to say color palette to it. Basically the same uh, vibe visually, I'm guessing. Sort of. One really good thing about this game's graphics is that each environment kind of has its own color palette, actually. This one's got a lot of, like, browns and reds, and also I accidentally used that nuclear explosion there. Nice. Now I get another one. Dance around, waiting for another. Yep, that little 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 Here it comes. Oh, so Max just air expresses you nukes. <laughs> Someone does. I'd assume it's Max, because I doubt these enemies are like, Here, have a key. Nice job, boss. Have another one. Look, people shit uranium in this world. You gotta do something with it. I do like the fact that it's not a key. It is the world's smallest nuke, for whatever reason. I Honestly, I think that that's kind of the joke. Like, you've yeah. got this incredibly powerful thing. It will do damage to you if you are too close to it when it goes off. Like, 15 damage. But it's not used as a weapon, and I'm not sure if it actually hurts enemies or not. It's just a key. It's a very Earthworm Jim thing to do, now that I think about it. Alright, now here we have the most easily confused cannon ever. <laughs> Where'd he go? Oh shit, dude. Oh, there he is. Oh shit, man. I think it's just confused because it looks like your head. It does. It's having an identity crisis. Brother, no! Stop! <laughs> Why did you drop a turkey next to me? Yeah, what is that noise? It's just a turkey. It um, increases your health by 50%. Huh. So I got these bastards just... Hey, go away, silly, like, Batman airplanes. Everything looks like Batman in this game. Anyway, you got these guys... Uh, we got these Batmans still. Alright, anyway, we got these guys taunting us in these little rooms, and I think we're um, quite sick of it. Launch mortars into those holes. Takes a little bit of aiming. Oh, cool. Yeah. Mortar, this is pretty much mortar's only use is for puzzles like this, because they just bounce around and everything. They're not good for, like, average weapons, like um, a lot of the other sniper bullets are. Alright, and now, naturally it explodes. 
And Wait. you know what? I've never actually made it over there to that uh to that other side of this like chasm here. Cause you normally just go down and continue the level, but let's give it a shot. Yep. Da -da -da -da. Nope. Da -da 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 -da. yep. Oh nice. <laughs> and <he> immediately die. <laughs> Those blue missiles are really powerful though. Yeah, seven damage, wow. Let's fast forward taking out these tanks, because no super chain gun equals taking a long time to fight tanks. And over here, your reward is another little bastard. That's so weird. Fox monkey. It is weird. I don't know what it even is. I, As a kid, I always called them, like, TVs. It doesn't really look like a TV. But... Sounds like one. It does. <laughs> Just a screaming fucking oh, television. I know what it does. It puts you at 150%. Oh, you mentioned that really. Ha! Huh. Yeah. Oh, I know what it does. You told me like 10 minutes ago. <laughs> yeah, I'm smart. <laughs> Already got three guys up there shooting down at us, and I'm like, eh, fuck it. Let's just move on. You don't need to die today. Another little mechanic I like is that these little tunnels, I mean, there's nothing happening in them, but they act as loading screens so that the game can continue without any loading screens. So you just, like, run through a tunnel while the game loads. Okay, from what I know so far, clearly there's a face under there. <laughs> nope, there's a fan that does this. This lifts you up on your parachute. Grenades! That's a very weird parachute model. Like, was it intended to be just four tubes, or were they going to put textures in between them? I think it may be like sacrificing realism for game design, because imagine if that was a solid parachute, you couldn't see shit. Oh, yeah, that's a good point, actually. It's like, uh, guys, game designer friends, I, I we, you need this parachute for the game, but I can't see anything. Make it ribbons. But that doesn't make sense. Th listen, we made it. We made an earthworm with a gun. <laughs> we don't need to make sense. All right. Listen, pal. We made an. We made an astronaut crow. I don't think we give a fuck. That's kind of. What, that's kind of what Kurt looks like. An astronaut crow? Yeah, look at him. Yeah, yeah a little bit. I can kind of see that. It's not what I'm thinking of, though. Specifically, the outfit he's wearing, I'm um, getting a little bit more into the story, is a, co it's a coil suit um, invented by his boss, uh, Dr. Fluke Hawkins. The two of them lived on um, on like a an orbiting spacecraft for years because the doctor was kind of shunned from science, and he, was, he went up to space to say, I'll show you! And then Kurt just came with him because he has nothing better to do. <laughs> then aliens came and the doctor was like, You're the only one who could save the world! Fuck, I don't wanna. Can I just, like, <laughs> buy some more, like, Shazam a few days later? I'm gonna Google that. Is there any... Is there a cleaning product called Shazam? I think so, actually, but I think it's a Dollar Tree product. There's a comic series. You could just say you're referring to Captain Marvel. Ooh, what's in this door? Oh, God! Alright, um, <laughs> I'm not going in there. <laughs> Happy birthday! Oh. oh, here's another Batman. This this one, uh, appears to be drunk. <laughs> He's just having a good time. Boy, I sure do love scouting out here in the middle of nowhere. This is great. Hi! Hey, buddy! <laughs> do you love me? Oh, no! And now, we are Batman. What? This is how we get into that room. Now he's really drunk. When you click the shoot button, you just say, Alert. This is pretty rad, I like this. This is... This is probably the funniest level in the game, because this mechanic doesn't actually come up again. Oh. Guys, there is an alert. Why aren't you listening? We don't listen to nerds. I tried to tell you you're going to die. We don't die to nerds. Hello, master. Fuck. <laughs> what? All right, we gotta get behind here. Get this, the world's most interesting <laughs> bomb. And an apple. And now look what happens when I throw that. Oh man, this is oh, an interesting bomb. I see what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, damn, dude. Sick. Oh, I, ow, fuck. I mean, I'm too distracted by this bomb to fucking feel my Wait, pain in my seriously? eye. 
<laughs> okay. Okay. I was a little worried there. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was just a fucking aggro tool again. So, would you say that's... Truth in advertising? False advertising? What do you call that? Well, I mean, it was a bomb. People were interested by it. I think that's pretty truth right there. I'd fund it. I don't know, I feel like if it exploded into butterflies that insulted the robots and then they died, I think that'd be more interesting. <laughs> Alright, and here we have our boss for the level. This is Slit Eye. Hi there. He's just, um, controlling the ship or something? He's pressing buttons. Alright, let's, uh, let's get out a good weapon here. First of all, let's see. Is there anything around here? There's apples. I mean, once you're at over 100 health because of the I feel top, you actually can't increase your health by anymore until you get back below 100. Huh. So, let's just uh, shoot him. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> Are you for real? What I'm using is homing bullets. These pretty much home in on it. Well, they home in on enemies. They don't do a lot of damage. But there is an alternative that we'll find later called a homing sniper grenade, which does quite a bit more damage. Sounds like a cerebral bore. <laughs> this poor guy. All he was doing is just doing his job and some dude shooting him with flying butterflies of pain. I'd like to point out that his job is to literally, uh, is to drive a tank that is literally miles large. Like, the tanks that, that, we are currently on a tank that is the size of a city, and it is destroying Laguna Beach. So, what I'm saying is, fuck this guy. You two are from California. Are you anywhere near Laguna Beach? Honestly, I have no idea where Laguna even is. No. Oh. I'm in the part of I'm in the part of California that people don't really think about, i.e., the capital. <laughs> I I think I got you beat there, Thorn. I'm in the part of California where uh, it's the direct center, where there's absolutely no fucking snow ever. People don't go to California for snow. It exists. Yeah, they go there for droughts. Oh look, sniper grenade. Just landed in front of us. We have mountains with snow. One thing I can't say about this game is that the bosses honestly aren't that great. This is probably one of the one of my least favorite bosses just because it takes so damn long. Uh HP sponge. A little bit. Plus there's no like bar that shows you his health. But yeah, I am using sniper grenades here. They're literally home fucking grenades that you shoot from your eye. Well, convenient. Yeah, for those who saw the title screen and showed our showed Kurt with kind of like a pointy double-sided helmet. When he does that, he's actually putting the gun on his hand on his helmet and uses it as a uh, sniper gun like this. Oh, cool. I think it's really cool that you can actually see like the three cameras at the top of the screen show you the bullets. Yeah, I really like that mechanic. It especially works really well with mortars because like because of the game's graphics, sometimes you can't tell if you if they went where you want them to go. So, the cameras are really helpful there. And we have defeated Slit Eye. Look, buddy, you were funny the first time, but after 20 shots, we just gotta fucking end it. Oh, what? Now this happens. Alright, at the end of every level, you are being sucked back onto uh, Dr. Hawkins' ship through this, like, streamline. Um, if you touch the walls, you take damage that carries on over to the next level. If you manage to not hit the walls at all or touch them minimally, you make it to the end of the tunnel where you see that I feel top and um, start the next level with 150 health. Wow. Okay, yeah, this is Earthworm Jim as hell. <laughs> Honestly, I wish I'd played more of that game. I think I played it like once. It was honestly not that good. It was just memorable. And every level ends with this image for some reason. Yeah, we did a good job janitorizing. That's awesome. Well done, Kurt. You saved Laguna Beach. MDK2? I think the reason for that is I think Shiny's headquarters were in Laguna Beach. There was an MDK2, but it was not made by Shiny. So, I mean, we could have <laughs> let it die for all we cared. Huh. 
And at the end of every level, they give you your stats for it. Um, they show exactly how many bullets you fired, your accuracy with the bullets, sniper rounds, and your accuracy with those, number of kills you got. I'm not sure if there's any bonus for getting all the kills. And also, rates it rates your headshots. I don't think it shows every single one of them, because if you're really good, it would take fucking forever for all the heads to appear. So we got rated 8 heads out of 10, I assume. 8 heads out of... <laughs> Eight heads out of, I don't know. Eight heads out of heads. Eight heads in a duffel bag. There's a lot of weird things about this game. It's like, it clearly has the Earth Orange influence, and then it has, like, has kind of the weird serious Sam mentality of, like, kill a bunch of dudes and get right at the end. There's, you can see a lot of things just, like, j just kind of put in there. It's really interesting to me. I'm kind of surprised that this didn't get as uh, out there as it did. Because it looks fun. It is very fun. It doesn't take itself seriously at all. And there is such little story in this game. Like, I've told you all the story there is, and it doesn't even tell you in the game. It just tells you that there's, oh, there's mind crawlers in a certain part of the world, and you gotta blow them up. This, I just really love this game's, like, subtle sense of humor. It's definitely trying to be funny without being, like, really in your face about it. It's really subtle. At times, it, it gets a little bit, like, into dark humor. And it's just... It's just such a fun, enjoyable, stupid game. Oh, I know what I know exactly what this game reminds me of. XCOM Enforcer. XCOM, really? Yeah, XCOM back in the day when they had the success of UFO Defense, they made a bunch of spin-off games involving but not limited to flight simulators, horror games, Cthulhu Tales, and a third-person shooter that plays a lot like this. I don't know which came first though. Shit, really? The only XCOM I'm familiar with is, like, the new reboots. Oh, yeah, that's where they came from. I played a lot of uh, the original XCOMs before the new one came out, so I'm kind of... I still got that in, like, a partition of my brain, but yeah, MDK kind of reminds me a lot of XCOM Enforcer more than anything, now that I think about it. And then next time, it will be taking out, once again, another kind of mind crawler in a different kind of environment. Have a good day. Hibbity-boo. Hibbity-boo.